Hi, welcome to the show today. My name is Anisha Pindore and I'm a senior program manager in the Azure DevOps community team. And today I'm joined in the studio with Sasha. Sasha, do you want to quickly introduce yourself? Sure. And I'm Sasha Rosenbaum, also a senior program manager on the Azure DevOps team. Great. Well, it's lovely to have you in the studio today, Sasha. Thank you. <laughs> so in this sprint video, we're going to be covering just some of the features released in Sprint 157. Uh, 157 is rolled out to all organizations, so you can start getting your hands on uh, just some of the features that we demo today, as well as checking out the release notes for the full list um, of features for the sprint. So let's just dive like literally just straight in. Um, so uh, previously, you might remember in, um, I think it was Sprint 155, um, we had Romy on the show. And she did a quick sneak peek into um, one of the features coming out in boards, which was the roll-up feature. Um, and so you'll be happy to know, everyone, that uh, uh, the roll-up feature has been released within the sprint, so you can get your hands on it right now. Um, let us know what you think about it. Um, I, we know that it was one of the most requested features from the community, so um, we'll be happy to get your feedback on what you think about it. So. Start using it right now. Um, another feature that uh, we've actually um, announced within the sprint is that you can now add more than one um, required approver within a group. Previously, you could only, um, or, well, it was automatic that you could only have one uh, required approver from a group. So now we've changed that. So it gives you a, that little bit more flexibility. So let me show you what that looks like. So I'm currently in um, the policy for this branch. And I have already have a automatic reviewer added, which is a group. If I go ahead and edit that, you'll notice I already have a group in here, which is the Azure DevOps community team. And this is the new feature here where you can set it as optional or required. And with the required, um, you can set what the, um, the amount of required approvals from this group. So I could go ahead and change that to three. Um, another, in addition to this, we've also added um, the ability to prevent requesters um, approving their own changes, which can be quite handy as well for some teams. Um, so that's pretty cool. Let us know what you think about that as well. Um, another feature that this one I, I particularly love, well, I love all of the features, but this one in particular is that you can now resolve work items using certain keywords when you um, commit um, your changes into a branch. Um, so uh, it will automatically go ahead and change the uh, state of a work item to a resolved state. So um, whether it's done or um, it's resolved. Um, so let me show you what that looks like. It makes things so much more easier that way as well. So um, with this, I have a um, PBI here. So I just want to make a quick note of the work item ID, which is 1567. If I go into um, my repo and make a quick edit to this readme, let's just go ahead and add an exclamation point or, yep, and then go ahead and click on commit. And in the comment itself, if I change this to something like this, oops, this fixes pound one, five, six, seven. Um, this is the keyword fixes. You can have this as fixes, fixed, or um, a fix. And if I go ahead and commit this, and go back to my um, PBI and go ahead and refresh this. You'll notice that the state changes to done. So that's pretty, um, pretty cool that it does it automatically. It will also add a comment in here as well within the discussion. Um, so it's fully traceable back to the work item that it changed when you did the commit. So that's that's pretty nice to have, and I'm sure that a lot of um, users will be using that. So let us know what you think about that feature as well. Um, so Sasha, there's um, a few things coming out from artifacts and pipelines. You want to tell us more about that? Yes, sure. So one of the cool features that are coming out this spring is it was inspired by the developer community. So one of the biggest requests for the artifacts team was to enable choosing the latest packages in the universal packages using the semantic versioning wildcards. So now instead of pinning it to a particular version of a package, you can use wildcards to select the latest. To quickly demonstrate this, let me just switch over to here. Um, and I have here a universal package feed, and you can see that I have a particular package with a bunch of versions available. Now, if I go into a pipeline consuming this package, 
um, you can see that I have a task that is a universal packages download, and I'm using a semantic version wildcard to download a version. Now, I could use a star to signify just the latest version of a package, or I can pin the major or the minor and use the star to select everything else. So if we look at one of the earlier runs of the same pipeline, you can see that the version for the package was one star, and then the matching version that the task found was 174, which was the latest version with the major pin to one. So now instead of pinning, you can use wildcards. And you can do this in the Azure DevOps task and also in Azure CLI. One of the Great. other... Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> One of the other cool things that are coming out is the deeper integration between your service hooks and YAML pipelines. So for multi-stage YAML pipelines, we now have the ability to integrate with a particular service hooks. So to quickly demo this, if I go here into my service hooks area, um, then click on added of a particular hook. You can see that in addition to the regular triggers that we always had, such as build completed and pull request completed and stuff like that, we now have particular things such as um, run stage approval completed, run stage state changed, and run stage waiting for approval um, that are specific to multi-stage YAML pipelines. So for instance, if you need to email your team um, to let them know that a particular stage is waiting for approval before it can get deployed, you can now do this with this web hook, um, service hook integration. Um, and the other thing that um, you can do now with the service hooks is if you're integrating with Slack, you now have the ability for the builds and releases to automatically at mention their owners. And that's pretty nifty, right? Yes. <laughs> makes, makes traceability so much more easy, and you can just bring in people just like that. Yes, and it is also coming for teams. Yeah, nice. <laughs> um, so unfortunately, that's all we have time for for um, this sprint video. So I definitely recommend checking out just some of the features that we talked about today and showed you folks, as well as checking out the release notes, and you'll see the link for it at the bottom of the video. And let us know what you think about some of these features, and, and we're always looking for more and more feedback from the community as well. Uh, you can either leave your feedback in the comments, um, or um, going to the developer community or just reaching out to us via um, our Twitter handle uh, at Azure DevOps. Um, so thanks again. Uh, thanks again, Sasha, for being in the studio. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and thanks again, everyone, for watching. And we'll see you all in the next sprint video. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.